I'm Paul, I'm a lead designer at Rivian, and I'm gonna show you how to draw an R1S. When you start off drawing your Rivian, you wanna set up your proportion and your perspective first. So a good rule of thumb is to start with the wheels. The R1S has about three wheels in between the front and rear wheels, so that's a good place to start to set up our perspective and proportion. It's good to think of the overall vehicle in its most primitive form possible. So really, when you look at an SUV, it's really just a box on top of another box with four wheels. It's a good way to get in the mindset of starting your sketch. Once the wheels are blocked in, what I like to do is the wheel openings, and this allows you to bake in room for the wheel travel, which is important for an off-road SUV because you want the vehicle to look capable and like it can go over some pretty gnarly terrain. It really helps set up the overall stack up of the body side. One element that makes up our body side is this A-line that sort of travels around the whole entire car. It just makes one bold shape that makes the car feel a little bit more robust and simple. A lot of times when we're sketching, we can actually use lines to communicate what the surface is doing. Basically drawing a section through the body side so it's showing off what the form is doing. So to set up the ride height, just take a point from the front axle to the rear axle and just draw a straight line and that'll give you the bottom of the car. So I'm still thinking at this point of the car as two series of boxes. Right now the sketch is still really blocky. So you can see my bottom box that I built and that's the overall body of the car. And then we can build the second box which becomes the greenhouse of the car or basically the area that passengers would see out of. Obviously, the greenhouse isn't a perfect box, so we have to go back in and finesse it a little bit by giving a little speed to the A pillars and the D pillar. Then adding a little bit of acceleration to the hood. So at this point, we've blocked in our two box design, which is the bottom box for the body, upper box for the greenhouse, and we finessed it a little bit, and now we have uh, overall proportion and perspective kind of blocked in. So up to this point, the sketch obviously isn't perfect and I'm not super worried about making every single line perfect because we'll always have time in the end to, to go back and refine the line work. The C-pillar design is is pretty bold statement on our car. The A-pillar is, is a black pillar, the B-pillar is a black pillar, and the D-pillar is a black pillar. The C-pillar is the only pillar that's body color, so it really stands out and it's cool because then it frames our logo, which is which is a nice touch. So now at this point, once I got my pillars in, I'll go through and maybe touch up some details a little bit, add the far wheel in. Cool. Here now we can start sketching in the front end. When we started drawing the front end, we wanted an element that made it feel really wide. And that's where this horizontal light bar comes into play that I'm drawing right now. And before we had just the horizontal light bar, we actually had our stadium lamps down low acting as fog lamps and it looked really modern and cool but there was some element character that was missing so actually taking the the stadium lights that were down low as acting as fog lamps and moving them up so they intersected the horizontal light bar uh, it, it really makes a front end statement that uh, is really recognizable and iconic so at this point we start adding a little bit more detail like like the c-pillar we start putting in some main body side lines and get to blocking in our front end proportion. One cool thing about the horizontal light bar is that it actually acts as a charge indicator as well. So while the car's plugged in, that horizontal light bar will turn green to signify how much charge you have in the car. All right, so moving on. You know, the line work's still pretty rough, but we're, we're still just focused on getting all the proportions in and, and blocking in the detail. So here, you know, we're starting to sketch our bumper detail, blocking in a little bit of the lower fascia. And then we get to the air intake. And yeah, this vehicle is electric, but uh, batteries get hot, so we still gotta keep this thing cool, especially when we're traveling 400 plus miles at a time. Now we can draw more detail in the lower, like the skid plate. 
you know, the skid plate helps protect uh, the underbody of the car when we're when we're taking this off roading. So this is starting to feel pretty good now. When we're designing the car, you know, you have the interior and the exterior to think about, but you also have the details like the wheels and. Uh, you know, a lot of the designers are designing these different parts, but they all have to work together to create this one harmonious identity. Along with, you know, blocking in some front end details, at this point uh, we've started to get into uh, some details like the wheels, blocking in a wheel design. And all these things come together to start making uh, the R1S feel a little bit more off-road capable. So one way to add some depth and a little bit of breadth to your uh, exterior is to just rough in the interior headrests of the seats, maybe see through the other side of the pillars. A lot of times we'll sketch that in just because it adds a little bit more realism. At this point, the overall vehicle is looking pretty good, so we can start adding in the little accents that, that start to make everything feel complete. So now we're at a point in the process where we can clean up our line work and sort of fix little mistakes we've seen throughout the way. And if you don't have Photoshop and you can't mess with the opacity of the layers, you can turn the paper over and just trace it. Once you get to this point, you can have some fun with it. I mean, you can throw in, you can start color blocking, you can uh, add a little bit of light and shadow to showcase what the forms are doing, add some reflectivity to the glass. Really, this is a phase that you can spend 20 minutes on or you can spend hours on. You can also block in some rough color blocking with, you know, your pencil if you're if you're drawing with pen and paper, and that just adds again just a little bit of depth to the sketch. So this is how to draw an R1S. The sketch right now is at a point where uh, we can hand it over to our clay sculptors, so we can take this from 2D and take it into the 3D world.